It's Chinese New Year, and you know what that means. That's right, spending loads of time with your family. Now, once you've said hello to everyone and told everyone what year you're in at school and how well you're doing in your subjects and oh yes, I have grown, haven't I? And once you've had lunch and snack and dinner and snack and afternoon tea and snack and supper and snack and some extra food and some extra snacks, once you've done all of that stuff, you've still got to spend loads of time with your family. And for me, that means one thing, board games. The thing is, if you say, let's play a game at Chinese New Year, everybody immediately thinks, ooh, mahjong. Now, don't get me wrong, I like mahjong, and I understand that it's very traditional and people love to play it here in Hong Kong. But when I have to play mahjong, I'm either like this, Or I'm like this. And everybody is calling me this. Plus you've got to have four players and you've got to have loads of space and you've got to have hours of time to spare. So I wanted to present to you my top five games to play at Chinese New Year that aren't Mahjong. <laughs> Here are the criteria for the games. Number one, they must be language independent which means that two people who speak different languages can still play together. So Scrabble is out. Number two, they must be easy enough for your younger brothers and sisters and cousins to learn. So Pandemic is out. Number three, they must be interesting enough for your grandparents. So fishing for floaters is out. Four. They must be quick to set up and quick to teach. So Hotel Tycoon is out. Number five, they must be suitable for different numbers of players. So Cluedo, which needs at least three players, is out. Bonus points if the games are a little bit competitive because your grandma will love that. So my first pick is Quirkle. Quirkle is a strategy game for two to four players, although I've played it with as many as seven players. You need to place tiles according to colour or shape and score points. If you get six in a row, you get double points. Grandma will love this because it's a bit like, well, Mahjong. My second pick is Trouble. Trouble is a game for two to four players. You need to move your pieces all the way around the board to home. If someone lands on you, you must go back to the start. You can play a lot faster with two dice. My third pick is Chinese Checkers. Chinese Checkers is a game for two to six players depending on your board. You need to step and jump your pieces to the opposite corner. If you're lucky, you can jump all the way across the board in one go. If you need reminding of how to play, you can watch my video. My fourth pick is Leo Goes to the Barber. Leo Goes to the Barber is a cooperative game for two to five players. You need to work together to move Leo through the jungle to get his hair cut. If your card doesn't match the tile's colour, Leo will stop and chat to that animal, and time is running out. This game is good for little brothers and sisters, as well as grown-ups. My final pick 
is Animal Inc. Animal Inc. is a game for two to four players. You need to assemble a pyramid from matching animal cards. If the pyramid gets high enough, you get extra points. This game is made in Hong Kong by a friend of mine, so think of this as a kind of promotion. I hope you have a lovely Chinese New Year holiday. Kong Hei Fat Choi. Thank you for watching my video. If you want to watch another Mr. O video, you can choose one here. Or even better, click here and click videos to see all of them together. Or click playlists to see collections like Mr. O Reads or Mr. O Plays. Finally, it would be great if you clicked like, which is here and subscribe, which is here. If you want to send me a message, click here, and your parents can click here to support my fundraiser. See you next time.